this is a, what I wrote from a, a, a vision, a prophetic experience I had in 1987. Earthquakes, especially in Japan and the United States, will spark a worldwide economic collapse. Now, that seems to be the word that just about everybody has been getting. Now, I've, you know, since then, I've received a lot of uh, words from other people and, and dreams or visions they've had over the last few years, all speaking to the, uh, you know, a Japanese quake or quakes coming to our own West Coast. And certainly they're, they're far more than I could possibly read myself. It, you know, it's amazing how many seem to have been hearing these same things. But um, it's interesting how many tied the Japanese earthquake, like I did in that vision in 1987, the Japanese earthquake, and ones in the United States to an economic collapse. There seemed to be that link in very many of these. Now, we all see in part. We know in part. We prophesy in part. Nobody has the whole picture. I don't have the whole picture. I'm trying to put it together with what others have been receiving on this. But so far, what we've been receiving has just all been just about the same thing. If there are other parts to this that uh, we haven't received yet, uh, you know, or that you've received, we would sure like to because there's more to this picture. We know N nobody has the whole picture. But uh, some of the things that I believe are relevant was in uh, Bob Jones' prophecies, and I've confirmed this with him in talks I've had over the last few weeks, was uh, he saw dead fish, he, in his vision he saw waves crashing on the shore filled with dead fish. He said this is one of the signs that the uh, that a quake is coming to our west coast pretty soon. And uh, what he saw in his vision was that it was the shifting of the plates of the earth that was sending out these electrical charges that were killing the fish. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, so far I've, you know, gone back and seen, are there dead fish coming up on the shores in California? Immediately, it was astonishing what's happening out there. You may have seen the uh, recent photo on, that was circulated widely on the internet about this harbor in California, Southern California, where the, you could not see the water for all the dead fish on the shore. It was truly a remarkable thing. This seems to be happening. That was one of the signs that Bob saw. Bob also saw continuous quakes happening in Japan that were sending like many tsunamis and these many vibrations through the earth to our west coast that were also unsettling the plates. Jim Berkland is a geologist and 50-year fellow with the Geological Society of America. He's the guy I saw yesterday who scared the, uh, well, you scared the wits out of me yesterday. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing just great, and the last thing I want to do is scare people, but I sure want to inform them. Well, you know, if there's any validity to your beliefs at all, there's uh, no harm in being prepared, that's for sure. Oh, so, yeah, don't be scared, be prepared. That's a good watchword. Did we just make that up together now? Should we patent that or yeah, something? Yeah. Well, I, I was a co-author. <clears throat> oh, okay. And it had been kind of a delay since the last strong quake in the Bay Area. But not only did we have these extreme tides, we had extreme numbers of missing pets. And there's a, thanks to a Argentinian uh, physicist, he had alerted in 1979 that he could predict local quakes based upon the numbers of missing cats in the local paper. Hey, Jim, I'm going to stop you there because we kind of moved off. You skipped past plate theory and moved on to something else. And you, you'd have established, I guess, some credibility in people's minds when you say, you know, you predicted a couple of these earthquakes ahead of time. But when you bring in animals and stuff, people, you, you may lose a lot of people. So let's take a break and come back and discuss that more and, and why okay, you think that's relevant. That's half right? the story. All right. Jim Berkland, the geologist, 50-year fellow with the Geological Society of America, predicting a, an earthquake in California imminently almost i mean we're with it by the time the month is over jim berkland is a geologist 50-year fellow with the geological society of america but he's also on this issue uh, kind of a rebel 
Oh, yes, a maverick. That's what the book is about, the, uh, the man who predicts earthquakes, Jim Birkeland, the maverick geologist. And I, I'm proud of it. You know, anyway. Hold on, Jim. Just back it up a little bit. Uh, it's easy to find, and I've searched. Uh, you'll, it's easy to find people in your field who will agree that an earthquake in one area can trigger earthquakes nearby. That's a recent development in the, the field of geology. You're I, right. I, and I, ten I, years ago, you couldn't years. find that. You're right. Ten years ago, you couldn't find that. Right. So now there are others, and, and I want to know if you're one of them, who believe that an earthquake far away, like in Japan, like the one in Chile and New Zealand, can have an impact to put extra stress on something like the San Andreas Fault or on the uh, nearby fault lines here. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay, so that is 50% of your worry right now for California? Well, I have a number of worries. Oh, well, the fish that died at the Redondo Beach and the, the earthquake fish, uh, the ore fish that washed up at uh, Malibu uh, last December, that's an earthquake fish that, that the Japanese are frightened about. But let's just deal with animals. Or let me just deal with tides. Well, I want to deal with fish. What, what does okay, the great. fish have to do with uh, oh. earthquakes? Well, you know, um, the orientation of uh, whales and uh, sharks and salmon and dolphins and, and uh, birds, they are able to navigate by means of a magnetic field, and they have magnetite in their bodies. And this has only been known for about the last 30 years. And uh, we know that the magnetic field of the Earth is uh, affected by solar storms, and also affected by local tectonic forces as earthquakes are about to, to develop. And so you can pick up uh, areas that uh, where animals are uh, running away from home or deep-sea fish coming into shallow water. And although that the fish killer was down the beach where a million fish came into shallow water and died because there wasn't enough oxygen, and they were supposedly chosen to chased in by predator fish, which is baloney. Uh, then you had... Uh, Oh, lots of uh, the whales that just threw off. Uh, okay, so what's the throwing them off, and how does that affect the uh, the Earth's crust? The way they navigate is by means of the magnetic field, and when the magnetic field gets uh, distorted by changes in the Earth's uh, magnetic, uh, the, the magnetic grains, the magnetite, um, and you can reproduce this in the laboratory, um, it, uh, it, it makes them very uh, un, uh, unsettled. And uh, so they'll, wild animals will come into town, and uh, your pets will run away in, in many cases. And uh, deep sea fish come to shallow water. And on that, but I believe all these things that are coming to pass are going to be one of the greatest opportunities for harvest yet. But uh, I do believe they're imminent. That we're going to see some things start to happen now already. There have been people out there, I get word back all the time, you prophesied that this was going to happen at this date. I have never yet even heard anyone put a date on these things. And I, I've even heard major Christian leaders saying that I prophesied a certain date. That is not true. I have not prophesied any dates for these things. And neither have I heard anyone else do that. There may be some out there. But I would just encourage you, rather than believe in what somebody said I said or anyone else said, go to the original source. Uh, I do not have a date. I do believe that, and, and it's obviously true now, when Bob got the word that we don't have to worry about the big ones hitting California until after the Japanese quake. It is after the Japanese quake now, so they could come at any time. That's what Japan does not need. An imminent earthquake warning just issued for several regions of the country on edge there, on edge here, because this, it really didn't start with Japan. Take a look at what experts are increasingly calling the so-called ring of fire that is circling the entire Pacific Ocean. Do you remember Chile's massive earthquake about a year ago? Then we had that big one in New Zealand just last month. Then, of course, Japan. And if this clockwise trend continues, my next guest says, North America looks to be on tap next. Don't laugh. Geologist Jim Birkeland is worried, and we, when he worries, you should worry too. Jim accurately predicted, get this, the 1989 so-called World Series earthquake four days before it shook the San Francisco Bay Area. And Jim says this month is of particular concern. Why, Jim? The month of October March and April are the three most devastating uh, earthquakes in terms of damage in the San Francisco Bay Area in history. And we're having on the 19th of this month, not only the full moon, but within an hour, the closest approach to the moon until the year 2016.
And the next day is the equinoctial tide. So you're bringing together three of the maximum tide raising forces. And we know about the ocean tides, but there's also an earth tide and there's a tide in the groundwater. And all of these help to uh, release sudden built up strain and cause earthquakes. All right, but that and would seem to imply that, 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 that we could be looking at a very imminent event in the United States within the next week or two. Is that right? Yes, my what I call a seismic window. This top seismic window in years is developing uh, between the 19th and 26th of this month. And this was a uh, 7.0 monster, and it says uh, geologists was, had warned about it. And a week earlier, the, they were talking about the tides, not to worry about the really high tides coming up. Well, I think there's, there's worry uh, here, too. All right, so, um, so let me just understand. You're a genius. I'm not, so I just want to follow your fine brain on not this. Not a genius. What you're saying is that there is a certain order to this, even though it doesn't appear like it. For a lot of folks, it just seems like random events. But you're saying that there is a, a process <laughs> unfolding here. For California, or, or California, Oregon, or whatever, what would that mean? What type of quake or disturbance or disruption would that be? Well, if it was one in the northwest, in the Cascadia Trench, like we had in 1700, that would be a nine-magnitude quake. I'm oh. not predicting that. But I'm saying we've just had a massive fish kill. Uh, maybe a million fish died in Redondo Beach. They had a massive uh, fish sweep in uh, in Mexico. We just had a bunch of whales come in close to San Diego. And what is that, that presage? When thing. you have events like that, what does that generally mean? What's going on in the water? It changes, changes in the magnetic field that often precede larger earthquakes. Well, most animals have the mineral magnetite in their bodies, including people, but it causes homing pigeons to enable them to get home. Just before big quakes, they often can't get home. Has to, there's a delay factor. And uh, so we look for those kinds of things. Just before the World Series quake, there was a very unusual beaching of uh, rare uh, beaked whales in the ocean beach of San Francisco. And then just after that, a, a equally rare pygmy sperm whale washed up at Santa Cruz within about five miles of the epicenter of the World Series quake. And that kind of beaching had never occurred before nor since. So we're looking for strange fish uh, coming into, from deep water to into shallow water, uh, wild animals. Uh, coming into uh, in the cities. Um, I used to just scoff at these kinds of things because I was a mainstream geologist until I found out that earthquakes were fitting a pattern. The big earthquake in uh, the Indian Ocean followed the mass massive beachings of whales in uh, Taiwan, uh, not Taiwan, but uh, uh, New Zealand and Australia and uh, Tasmania. Uh, and then within a couple of days, they had an 8.3 south of New Zealand, and then came the 9.1 in yeah. the Indian Ocean with a big tsunami on the very day of the full moon. Wow. Uh, the previous big quake and, and tsunami uh, was in Alaska, uh, was the 9.2 magnitude event. Uh, on the day of the full moon, on the 27th All of March, All right, Jim, so bottom line, we have a lot to watch, and believe me, your track record compels us to watch it. Jim... Thank you very much. I hope you're wrong, That's buddy. Wise. I really hope you're wrong, but your record seems well, to... Well, especially at this time. Right. All the, right, buddy. The world history, and it's not, not good. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Jim Berkland in San Francisco. He's a pretty good geologist.